All right, Smashers, let's talk about habits. In particular, let's talk about bad habits in Smash. No, hey, we're not talking about wearing deodorant before the tournament, okay? We're talking about habits in game. Habits are super important in fighting games as a whole, especially in Smash. And the reason is pretty simple. Hey, good players watch what you're doing, right? They read everything you do looking for patterns. So if you have some bad habits you find yourself often repeating, a good player is gonna let you know the hard way with an over-the-top swag play that gets clipped. Oh, oh, what? God damn. In Smash, a lot of people enter the scene with a ton of bad habits because they got good playing casually. Smash Bros is so successful because casuals and pros alike love it. Whether you put the hours in or even days, week, months, and years in, Smash, hey, it's just fun to play. When people get good at Smash, they usually start casually, right? They beat the crap out of their friends at parties until eventually they need a bigger pond to swim in. Then they go to a tournament and, well, they usually get rocked. That happens because they've developed a lot of bad habits while playing casually with friends, and those often go unchecked. So, in a casual match, friends, they're gonna let you get away with Smash attacking in neutral, right? Consistently rolling and picking the same get-up options over and over. Sometimes bad habits even help you win casual matches. If a player is super slow to react, then a smash attack could be an optimal punish. But in tournaments, those kinds of habits lead to three stocks and Twitter combos. And that's all right because it's just normal to have some bad habits from casual play or just from inexperience. What's important is changing those habits, right? Replacing the bad ones with better ones. So before we can even get into changing bad habits, we gotta talk about how to find them. In Smash, a bad habit is what loses you neutral. A bad habit gets you hit. However, knowing just what gets you hit in such a complex game can be tricky. To find out your bad habits, you have to get a little analytical. Drop the Johns, just drop the Rage at OP characters, and just focus on what you gotta hit. Some habits are easy to spot, right? If your opponent keeps down smashing you after knocking you down, then you're probably rolling too much. If you're getting juggled most of the match, then that means you should air dodge earlier, or just try to float away and get to the ledge. Other habits are just hard to see. You might be getting edge guarding because you recover low too often, or air dodge too early, or air dodge too late, or you don't throw out an aerial to beat theirs. It's not always going to be easy to find your bad habits, but the best way to start is just by looking. One way to look is to play analytically, right? Thinking about the game. Another is to save replays and watch your games. When you watch your games, you could focus entirely on fighting bad habits. You know, when you're playing, you're so focused on the win that it could just be hard to think about the details. Don't let the salt get in your eyes. Sometimes it's important to look back at a loss or a close win. Friendlies help a lot with this too. You know, a lot of people play in friendlies and in brackets to grow and try out new techniques. You won't always get 100% from people, but you'll get a laid back environment where it's easier to talk about the game for a bit. Getting an extra eye on your game can help a ton when finding bad habits. One last thing you can do is learn the meta. So what do the pros do? You know, a lot of pros are quick to talk about options they think are good and are even quicker to show them on stream. When you learn about the meta, you could just learn some things on the fly, like how good spot dodging is or what simple kill setups a character has. The risk at this kind of information needs context. Most options are bad options if you overuse them. Just because you hear an option is good or bad doesn't mean it's always good or bad. Thanks, Sakurai. Now we're gonna get to the tough part, actually changing those habits. Habits can be super frustrating because they happen to be on a subconscious level. Since we don't think about them, it can feel like you can't do anything about them. But you can actually change any habit. You just gotta know how they work. Habits work in what psychologists call a three-step loop. The first step is the cue. That's an event that triggers your brain into the second step, an automatic action. Your brain doesn't fully think about the action, it just does it. The third and final step is the reward. This is some positive or useful outcome that happens after the action. This lets your brain know that you did a good job. Okay, so anyways, let's bring this into Smash. Let's say a player likes to roll a lot, right? A whole lot, like way too much. Player A is responding to a Q, an attack from another player. Her brain has a habit to deal with this without using all of its energy. It tells her to hit the shoulder button and the stick. Her friends miss and she resets neutral. The reward, she doesn't get hit, so it works. Player A enters tournaments and rolling stops working. Her opponents read her favorite option and punish it. Player A doesn't have to roll herself into oblivion though. All she has to do is replace the second step, the action, with a different one that will get the same reward. You gotta be sure to find the reward that's driving the habit. In fighting games, this is actually way more linear than in real life because the reward is usually pretty clear. 
Now, player A chooses to spot dodge more often because it gets the reward more often. Player A keeps grinding and now gets to better opponents who punish the spot dodge. Now, she mixes and rolls, shields, and parries to get that reward more often. She turned that bad habit into a good one by replacing the action with a better, less predictable one. And that's often the name of the game, guys, being less predictable. There's one more super important piece to add to the equation, belief. Player A believes in herself, right? Psychologists say that believing can actually change your habit. Don't be a soak man about your bad habits. Believe in your ability to change your habits, guys. Or at least believe in me that believes in your ability to change your habits. So before you go shaking everything up, remember to take it slow and be patient. Habits build over tons and tons of repetitions, right? And you've got a lot of habits. So take things step by step, literally. So find those cues, those routines, and those rewards. Then change that bad routine for something optimal. Try and focus on one habit at a time, too. Trying to change everything is going to spread your brain too thin. We've got habits so our brains don't short circuit. Throw them all out and you're going to probably end up throwing your controller too. So before we go, we should say that everyone is always working on their habits. Even the best players have to change up their habits constantly, right, to stay ahead of the competition. When you start out, it's pretty simple. Roll less, space attacks better, air dodge to ledge, and so on. And, you know, as you get better, it's going to get harder because the cues, the actions, and rewards are more complex. Interwoven and, you know, usually hard to figure out. But you're a galaxy brain human, and you can figure it out, guys. You really, really can. So, believe it. You can do it.